Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Spotlight Thursday. We continue our conversation with Kendall Lumpkins. This is part two of a two-part series with our brother, Kendall Lumpkins. He is a minister, a mentor, a public speaker, a lover of God, and a author of his book, Wrecked But Not Total. Listen in as we talk about his redemption his understanding of who God is, and what's the next steps in his journey. Sponsor for this half hour has been EverydayMothersIntuition.com. EverydayMothersIntuition.com is a company designed to encourage, empower, and educate expectant mothers, new moms, as well as experienced, offering books, classes, and knowledge-based information on all things motherhood. Everyday Mothers Intuition for every season of life, there is a mother to help along the way. EverydayMothersIntuition.com. That's EverydayMothersIntuition.com. My wife, no joke. Like, people that knew me, it's quick, real quick, funny story. Uh, I met my wife in 2012, March the 24th of 2012. Mm -hmm. So I met her two weeks later, which is April the 5th. I told a friend of mine that I've been running with for 20 years, I said, hey, man, it's my wife. He said, bro, you done dealt with too many women. You done been in relationships longer than this. You're just emotional. You done found somebody that was pretty, and you talking about you want to marry. You said, Kendall, just give it some. I said, hey, man, I'm done. This is it. She my wife. He said, wow. He said, Kendall, I, I don't believe that, bro. I mean, you my boy, and I ain't trying to knock what you're saying, but I just don't believe it. I said, okay. Six months later, I asked her to marry me. Six months after that, we got married. We actually got married. A year and two weeks after we initially met. Wow. People were blo people were blown away by that because they like, hold up. Man, something wrong with Kendall. Right. He really gonna right. marry this girl? Like he asked her to marry at two at, at six months? And I know him, but I had changed. Like my heart was changed. Right. And then if you pray and ask God to give you something, why you take forever to Claim it and do what you need to do with it. Right. Very, very true. It, I mean, I mean, you you had a whole new perspective on on life, and you're looking at it from uh, from uh, a new mindset. So, so with a new mindset comes a, a different method and a way of doing things. So, so I can definitely see, and I know exactly where you're coming from. I know exactly where you're coming from. So, so, I mean, you have people questioning, like, who is this guy? Because they, they knew who you used to be, but they weren't necessarily understanding who you had become. Right. So let me put a tag in there, too, Channing, because this is so profound that you're on this subject. We need to start really looking at the Bible as... Is there a principle that I need to apply? Because when you think about Saul, uh -huh. Saul was converted on the road to Damascus. But what I love so much about Saul, we don't talk about, is that although nobody believed that Saul was converted, he knew in his heart he had changed, so he didn't let the doubts of other people stop him from doing what he knew God called him to do. Right. And so many people, like I'm saying, with me being, oh, six months in the game, married, asking my wife to marry me. Like, if I would have doubted what God did in my heart, I would have never got married. Because only you know what God did for you. And so many people in the world today are waiting for everybody else to believe 
before they believe. Hmm. But Saul, the same Saul that was converted to Paul, he had murdered people and they said, hold up, we can't accept this cat. He want to be one of us now? Right. So Paul was like, I hear all this. Look, I come to you at peace. I come to you trying to trying to join the ministry. They they rejected him. But Saul didn't let that stop him because he knew that he had an encounter with God. Right. And you can't. So there's gonna be some there gonna be some people that'll see you for who you are because of what they know you from. And if you let what they say and what they think or their doubts about who you are and what God did in your life keep you from it, it'll always hinder you. Very true. Very true. Uh, because you just, it, it's going to happen. It's, uh, it's going to happen no matter how, how much you try to avoid it. That, that uh, scenario is always going to happen where, where you're going to have to have a decision on whether or not you're going to continue to do uh, what God has called you to do, or you're going to listen to the people, or even better, sometimes it's not even people, it's your current circumstance. Um, just today, um, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, um, there's so many, there's so many issues and mistakes that I've uh, done and that I've incurred, uh, or, you know, self-inflicted wounds, things like that. But then God had to remind me, you know, Moses committed many mistakes, but God still used them. Joseph, who was going to be, uh, the, so to speak, savior of Egypt, he, he opened up his mouth to talk about something he was going to have and a, a position he was going to have based off of a vision that God gave him before it was time. His brothers took it the wrong way, uh, and he put himself in a bind. Uh, you know, David, Saul, like you said, Peter. We go on and on. We see all these great men that go, went on to do great things for God, but at the same time, they they were still uh they still had circumstances that we all can relate to where where they weren't perfect so sometimes it's people that uh the people that you see that may doubt you or or won't respect what you're trying to do and sometimes it's the circumstances that won't respect what you're trying to do and are you going to look at your circumstance or are you going to continue to press forward saying you know what I'm still, God still has use for me, despite whether I messed up or, or this situation that appeared to be something, uh, that I should be dealing with because I'm following after God. Sometimes people get that confused when actuality yeah, what, is those trials that pr produce that patience. Yeah, without a doubt, because, uh, when you think about it, man, like, and this is why, you know, if we, if, if everybody's going to just be real and be honest, and I know we're not like, you know, many people don't like to share what they go through or they don't like to talk about it because we like to hide behind stuff. But you need people in your life that you can be all the way real with, like that you could tell that I made these mistakes, that I did this stuff because you can deceive a lot of people, especially folks that want to come to God because they know they can't be perfect. So if you hold up this image as if you're perfect, and you don't make mistakes, and you don't have any baggage, you don't have any hang-ups, then it's like, I can't get there. So the reality is that we all got some stuff, and what you're explaining is the reason why I wrote the book, Wreck But Not Total, because there was a place in my life, a point in my life, whenever I thought life was over for me. So uh -huh. I had to get, I had to get less than God's best because I had done made so many mistakes. And God was showing me, Kendall, Everybody in the Bible other than other than Jesus Christ made some mistakes. Right. Everybody that he used were flawed. Right. So if, so that, if he could use them, he could use me. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And, and that's, that's, that's a very big point that people need to hear. Um, so let's, let's get into that. You wrote a book, um, Wreck But Not Total. Very profound book. Um, I believe people that, that have it, that, uh, that's read it, um, they were impacted by it. Um, and you talked briefly about what inspired you to write it. Um, what, what is your hope? Uh, first of all, what is the book about for those who don't know? And what is your hope as an author that people will gain from it? So I was riding home one day from Prentice, Mississippi, my wife. That's where my mother-in-law lives. And we were in our Nissan Altima at the time, and I hit a deer. Okay. And I hit the deer. Deer gets up, runs off, but I'm still able to drive the car. So I said, man, this represents my life, although I'm driving this car. Mm -hmm. This represents my life, but not totally. And what I want people to get out of it is that stop thinking that life is over with for you because you made some mistakes or you're past a certain age or you've done too much wrong for God to really use you. And this is what I had to really, really take hold of is that God did not change his mind about my future because of my mistakes in my past. And if I could sum up Red But Not Total, that's what it's all about. Getting people to overcome themselves, to overcome their own self-doubt, their own insecurities, and believe that God still has his best waiting for them. He's just waiting on them to change. He's waiting on them to make the step. Wow. That's definitely something that people need to hear. Because we all, um, we all have had to, uh, struggle with insecurity at some point and trying to, or even, even considering doing anything that God has, uh, called us to do, whether it's the simple thing. Hey, go talk to that person that you're working next to at your job and tell them that I love them. Or, or just, you know, speaking to someone about the love of Christ or, or, the everyday things that we do, there's a factor where, like you said, we, well, if it's being somebody who's being useful for God, there's always that factor that you wrestle with initially where you always think about uh, or have a quick glance, a glimpse of what you, who you used to be and whatever you came out of and feeling, uh, feeling less than validated in Christ because you have so much baggage, whoever you are. Everyone has baggage. And then allowing that to uh, to intimidate you into not doing and moving forward into uh, what God has for you without realizing that every single person, like you said, throughout the scriptures, uh, aside from Jesus, had that baggage, had that internal struggle, but they they found a way to press forward in faith to complete missions, to start churches, to continue to press and push and speak about the gospel. And the more they did it, the more faith they had to move forward, and the more they realized that it was never in their own effort. It was never in their own strength, but they were able to produce things that they could never have imagined because they allow God to use them. So, so everything that you're saying is right on point. It is key. And uh, if that is what people get out of this book, then they will get a greater understanding of, of what potential lies with inside of them. Yes, sir. So, without a doubt, man. So it's just, and and I and and I'm gonna tell you, man. Like you know, just to put a plug in, you know, social media is a great tool. Right. I, I really, really believe it. I like I like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, on the flip side of that, I really, really want your listeners. I really, really want people across the world, uh, because 
I had to realize this for myself. I had I got caught up in it. And yeah. the same people that you see on social media that God may be using, that he's given a uh, platform and he's allowing to influence a lot of people, those are human beings. They make mistakes. They're not perfect. And not many people are going to tell you about their failures, are going to tell you about their struggles. So don't get caught up in what you see because those guys are just like you. Those people are just like you. They don't have more access to God than you do. It's just that we have to figure out what lane we're supposed to be in and run in that lane. And God did not put everybody here to do the same thing. Right. I mean, without a doubt, and and I would even t- uh, piggyback on that. Um, those uh, those people who have large platforms or or just are very influential on social media, uh, you do see the highlights, and some of them are open enough to share their struggles. They don't share everything because there's obviously. Uh, so much that you will share. Even even Jesus had his set group of people that that he shared his most intimate times with, uh, in, out of the disciples. So obviously you're not going to see the deep darkest things, but um, sometimes they do share their struggles. Um, but even in that, uh, looking at them from a place where you feel like you can never achieve that is a mistake. But in the same vein, looking at people and holding them to a higher standard than you hold yourself to. So when they do make a mistake and not covering them in grace to allow them to be human beings who do make mistakes is equally as damaging because that does nothing but hurt the body of Christ as a whole because Christ is constantly calling us to love beyond ourselves. He's called us to forgive uh, even when uh, it, I believe it was Peter. He said, shall I forgive my brother seven times? And the Lord told him not just seven times, but 70 times seven in a day. So just the, just the, humble approach you have to take to say to to say you know what you're no better than I am and maybe I didn't deal with the same struggle you did but I'm I'm no more perfect than you are it takes Christ to continue to make us both whole so so I'll be quick to forgive and quick to love and quick to cover you instead of backbiting and talking about you and things like that when I I don't have that room to do that. And once we understand that, then we can pour into each other more often than not and also respect the lanes, like you said, that we're in individually because we're not all here to do the same thing. And that's how we keep the wheel turning, and that's how we gain the momentum, and that's ultimately how we uh, ultimately expand uh, the gospel to people who feel as though uh, that's not something that they would necessarily agree with. It's by what you're showing people, by the love that you have for one another. And that's the biggest key. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I agree, man. And if, uh, you, you touched on some major stuff, man. And I think that if we had that understanding that you just explained, we wouldn't be in competition with one another. We would support one another. We would encourage and push one another to be the best because we know we're one body. We know that God needs everybody on board in the ministry to do what he put us all here to do. And for us to cover one another is so huge because where do we get off thinking that we're better and, and we don't have mistakes to where we can point out everybody else's faults anyway? And that 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 is uh that is the key. Um So whenever you look in the mirror and you know yourself, 
you'd be less prone to talk about other people whenever you can see your own mistake. Oh, that that's without a doubt. That's without a doubt. And and um it it'll cause you to have a sense of uh uh more more understanding of how much you need God. Um because without him you could be in the same ditch or find yourself in the same ditch. So so we can't there's we don't have enough we don't have enough superhuman strength to look down on on other people in the body nor nor should we look up to them as though they're they're better than us in a sense of not being able to not say everyone's called to different portions but not to not look at somebody that and feel as though they're so untouchable in that you that makes you end up feeling as though you can't make an impact especially on your own community. And what I mean by own community, I mean your own household, your loved ones, your friends. That's a community. And and never feel like you can't make an impact there because you're not at a place where somebody more uh, noticeable is. So that's definitely uh, where it starts. And, um, you know, this is this is a show that, that wants to encourage people to step out of their shells and to get active because there's more that that needs to be done. I mean, I often say say to people, though we have a lot of churches, though we have a lot of people doing things, it when we look at the world right now, we see that there's still a whole lot of work that needs to be done because there's a whole lot of other people who are sitting down on their purpose because they feel like they're not enough. And that's just not true. It's not true. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's good, man. That's good. And whenever we get that understanding, man, I think the world's going to be a much better place because my pastor is my is, is a friend of mine. I respect his position. I respect his call. And what I love so much about this guy, man, he he encourages me to do what I do. Right, he's not in. He, he don't feel insecure, nor do I feel insecure because he got a role to play, just like Kim Dale got a role to play, and we both Absolutely. get that. Absolutely, man. And um, so um, this has been definitely a good conversation. Um, so for those who don't know you, um, uh, one, where can they find you? Two, what ongoing projects do you have and what new projects are you coming up with uh, that you would like to share as well? So uh, I'm on all, I'm, well, I'm not on Snapchat, but on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is simply at Kendale Lumpkins, one word, no spaces, no dashes, no periods. It's just K E N D A L E. Lumpkins, L-U-M-P-K-I-N-S. And uh, the next projects, man, I'm actually uh, back in my hometown in Columbia, Mississippi, working with the schools there uh, to work with some kids, man, just on some behavior issues, just trying to trying to build them up, help them to become better leaders. And I have a couple speaking engagements coming up. Nothing really set in stone just yet. We still have some preliminary stuff we're working on. But really just starting my public speaking business, man, and just putting my name out there and hopes to uh, people to call and, and give me an opportunity to come inspire, encourage their staff, their kids, or their team, whatever it is, man. Awesome. Hey, you heard it right there. Uh, please uh, please reach out to him because he's definitely a guy who's not in it for the business. He's in it to change lives. and. Those are the people that will spend time and and follow up with you and and make sure that you're you're uh, on the right path. He has the he has the ability to to connect with people. Um, so so it's definitely um, I I know him. I, I know his life. He's definitely a man who's very passionate about his family. Um, he's passionate about uh, what he does. Um, he's very passionate about people. So so um 
reach out to him and uh, follow him. Uh, he always uh, he's always posting encouraging words to to get you back in line if, if you maybe been off uh, off the scale for a day or two um, to focus on what the bigger picture is. So also uh, for those who who will listen to this, please visit uh, uh, what's your website? It's www dot kendale dot com got you visit kendale lumpkins dot com kendale lumpkins dot com and go ahead and purchase a book or two for for yourself for a family member uh wrecked but not total um please 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 go out support and you know uh the holidays are coming up Grab a couple for for a family member that you may uh, may think you know what they need an extra boost to discovering their best version of themselves despite what they've been through uh, things like that and uh, and this may be a good read for them uh, so so we want to thank our brother Kendall Lucas for being on the show today um, it was so such an honor. So blessed to talk to you, man. You encouraged me. <laughs> I'll be honest, you encouraged me today. Uh, so I know what you do is, is pure, is genuine, and I thank you so much for being on the show with us today, brother. Hey, man, it's an honor for me, man. And anytime you need me, anytime you want to do it again, just say the word and we can make it happen. Absolutely, absolutely. No no doubt about that. We'll definitely do uh do it do some things in the future. Um so uh we we are brothers, uh we're we're going toward the same goal. We have different uh different uh lanes but we're all reaching for the same purpose. So I'm I'm definitely definitely glad to know a man like you. Uh and uh this is just one of many more opportunities to work together uh in in that vein as well, man. I appreciate you, man. Well, yeah, man, feelings are mutual, man. And, uh, you know, you brought me back to them old, old gold days, man. I'm glad to still be connected to you now, man. So it's all Absolutely. good. Absolutely. So uh, one more time, uh, our brother Kendall Lumpkin, thank you for being on the show. Uh, this has been another edition of From Brother to Brother. Uh, this has been another edition of Thursday Spotlight with Kendall Lumpkins, the author of Rent But Not Total. Uh, check him out at KendallLumpkins.com and on social media as well. And uh, we're expecting great things and many more great things to come from you, brother. God bless you, and uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you, man. Y'all be good. All right, man. Take care. All right, man.